Well, hello. For the tenth year in succession, we invite families to parade their wits in public. And once again, they seem willing to run the risk. Nice to get the answers right, but these plucky sports are willing to run the risk of getting them wrong. Let me introduce them. First of all, we have the Pollock family, who come from Southport in Merseyside. Mr. Michael Pollock is a company director. Hello. And his wife, Wendy, is with him. She works as a part-time teacher. Hello. Their children are Elissa, 14, Hello. and Daniel, 12. Hello. Their opponents in this first program are the Buswell family, a very apt and propitious name for a program which has so much to do with buzzers, from Wimbledon in London. Mr. David Buswell is a consulting engineer. How do you do? And his wife, June, is with him. Hello. Their children are Andrew, 14, Mark, who is 11. Hello. Hello. Let me remind you, or rather, let me remind me what the rules are. I think it's simply that if you buzz, you have to answer upon the instant. If you don't answer instantly, I give the other side ten, because dwell on it a second, it's a useful way of excluding them from having a try. No one does it deliberately, but it can be done by accident. So if you buzz, you answer. We'll start with what I take to be the equivalent of running on the spot or around the block, freshen you up a bit. Only get five points for each of the right answers here, because they're really rather simple. But, oh, look at that pile of hands on each buzzer. Um, it's words beginning with D-A-N. Nothing could be simpler. Ready? To hang suspended. Dangle. Yes, dangle. Here's one, I think, even easier. An Italian poet. Dante. Bonnie. Yes, Dante. I think the Buzzwells had it, but didn't buzz quite so quick. Prince Charming's valet. Dandino. No. Danino. Neither. Oh. Dandini. Dandini. Not Dandino and not Dan... whatever you said, no. Mrs. Buzzwell. <laughs> not quite. Give you another one now. A flowering weed. <laughs> Polly. Dandelion. Yes, dandelion is right. Clammy. Dump. Dank. Dank. Yes. Damp is definitely not clammy. But dank is. Damp is wet. Slightly wrong, Mrs. Pollock. Absolutely right, Mrs. Buswell. So, thus refreshed as this sort of uh, little sort of bit of gymnastics has produced, uh, have a look at this. Now, there you have the silhouette of a, an English county, and you have to say which it is. But you'll get clues because little bits of the other counties will come drawing themselves in. By Eric So Potent Art. Yes, Mr. and Mrs. Devon. Buswell and Co. Devon. Devon. You're quite right. It is Devon. I think I'm right in saying. You see the rest, then you get the pointy, the leg bit, as I think of it. There you have the leg, and there you have Devon. You're right. Now, uh, we have a piece of music for you to listen to, and then after you've listened to it, I'll ask you a question. Here it comes. Uh, right, um, it's a simple question. It often has nothing much to do with the music, as you remember from previous series. What's a vegetable? <laughs> ah, yes. Potato. No, no, could easily have been. Why not? But it wasn't. What's the vegetable? Oranges. No. What were you thinking of? Well, just guessing. Ah, oh, just guessing, just snatching one out of the air. No, onion, because the music was called Green Onions. Yes, it was. It sounded they'd been composed on a... Uh, sort of computer and played by one, but it isn't. It's apparently very well known. Uh, have a look at this, will you? Which word completes the word begin? Uh, the blah, 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 blah. I haven't Some. Even, 
I say what I mean. Yes, it does. Well interrupted. A risky business, young Buswell, interrupting, but you did it to some effect there. Hand, some, and some body. So you have it. 25 plays 15. At a bloodstock sale, a racehorse has sold for 750 guineas. Probably only had three legs at that price. How much was this in decimal currency? Ah, straightforward, but uh, nasty to do on your fingers. Yes. My God, you're a computer, sir. <laughs> How splendidly well done. £787.50, you're quite right. What have yards, beds, wine glasses, human beings, and lines of verse? Hey, I didn't press. I'm afraid the Pollux are, dear, the first victims of the series. They press too soon. Did not answer. The Buswells get ten points for nothing. Oh, dear. A certain sort of sadistic pleasure I get when I have to award these things, but there you are. So, the Buswells now have a chance, a sort of free chance of answering this. I hadn't quite finished. Um, yards, beds, wine glasses, human beings, lines of verse, what do they have in common? One... Yes, they all have metres. They're all metered. I do, well, feet? yards aren't feet. meters, <laughs> are they? they Beds feet. not. Do they have feet? Can't have two answers. Mm -hmm. You got the right answer the second time, but that's no good to anyone. Feet, yes, they all have feet, but if you'd said that first, you'd have got ten. Anyway, you got ten from your friends, the Pollux, that time, didn't you? Have a look at this, will you? Can you say, these are cathedrals, well, you know, sort of parts of cathedrals. Can you say which is the top half of the cathedral below? A, B, C, or D? C. No? Not C? Buswell. A. A, yes. Do you know why? Salisbury Cathedral. You're dead right, my lad. <laughs> and so it floats down there it is. I'll tell you, the other spires are Ely Cathedral, B, C is Worcester Cathedral, D is Durham Cathedral. 45 plays 25. What trade involves Flemish bond, diagonal bond, English bond, and stretching bond? Printing. No, not printing. Buswells? Woodwork? No, it's bricklaying. <laughs> Bricklayers, they lay uh, bricks in rows regularly in a sort of pattern for strength. It's called a bond. <clears throat> Who is the chief person, the chief person missing from this little list? Catesby, Winter, Percy and Wright. Forks. Forks? You're quite right, because it was the guy Forks. Sir uh, Plotters to blow up the House of Parliament. That's right, and these were uh, some of the chief conspirators. As shown in this diagram, oh, it's one of those little chill your blood, these diagrams, come out of an arithmetic book round about 1938, I'd guess. A wooden box measures one and a half inches by two and a half inches by three inches. A spider, wouldn't you know, it goes from corner A to the opposite corner B by walking across the sides of the box. Now, if it takes the shortest possible route, how far does it travel? Looks more difficult than if you can just sort of break that box open, so to speak. It is. Yes, seven. Buzzworlds. Seven inches. No, not seven. Now the Pollocks can relax a little and think about it. Yes. Five and a half. Did you say five and a half? Yes. No, it's five inches. As a matter of fact, if you open the sides of the box out, you see, so that they're all in the same plane, you have a right angle triangle besides three, four, and five, and thus you get it. But, uh, with the, as the people at home might guess, sitting here with the bright light shining on you and only uh, what you've got in your head to help, it's very difficult to get <coughs> even close to it. 55 plays 25. Now, here we have just the father and the younger child only, so the others mustn't do anything except will the answer to them. What name was given to the Union of Belgium, Holland and Luxembourg in 1947? Benelux. It was Benelux, quite right there, Mr. Polly. <laughs> Can you see if you can identify the substance of this picture? It's been taken from a, a deceiving angle. A washing machine. No, it isn't a washing machine. But I see exactly what you mean. It could be, but it ain't. It's a plug hole. It ain't a plug hole, young Buswell. It's a gas ring. It's a gas <laughs> ring. Now you see it draws out, you see a bit more of it, and you know just exactly what it is. Quite close so far. 55, playing 35, more music, here it comes.
stuff. Nice enough, that. What kind of wildlife do you associate with? Birds. Birds, you do. Tell us, it's Mr. Polly. It's the sweet Barry Spiegel called the birds. It is indeed. Nothing more to be said. Now we'll have a round of questions about birds for no reason at all. You get ten points each time you get one right. Ready, steady, go. Which bird appeared on the farthing from 1937 to 1956? The wren. The wren. You had it too, I swear. A pen is the female of which bird? Swan. You're right. Oh, breathless Mrs. Pollock, you were there. And you're absolutely <laughs> right. The swan it was. Which birds fed Elijah in the desert? Ravens. Yes, indeed. Correct. Which bird is known poetically as Philomel? Nightingale. It is. Good for you, Mrs. Buswell. And finally, which bird was the symbol of Athens? The eagle. No, nope, not the eagle. The dove? No, it was the owl. The owl. And I'll give you the scores. Close enough. 75, 65. Have a look at this. Oh, nasty bit of work here. Four flash lamp bulbs A, B, C and D wired up to a switch and a battery. When the switch is turned on, which two bulbs light up? Pollux. A and D. No. A and C. No, C and D. You have got that over with so quickly and got it wrong, I didn't get the full enjoyment from it. Eric, do a... That's right, fiddle with it, lad. Oh, there you go. It's on the blink. Oh, yeah. Well done. <coughs> yes. Right. God, a lot of ingenuity goes into that. <laughs> Splendid. Great. The twins, Jane and June, each had a ten-pound note so that they could buy their own birthday presents. Jane spent twice as much as June. June received three times as much change as Jane. How much did each of them spend on their present? I'll go on rattling through it and you can think about it. Jane and June... Ah. Seven fifty and two fifty. No. Six yeah. pounds and four pounds. No, eight pounds and four pounds is the answer. You're bowling me out with all these wrong arithmetical answers, but still it does get them over with, and that's something, isn't it? Let's face it. Children only. There's always a black one between A and B and between C and D, but never between E and F. What the dickens am I talking about? Children only, all on your own. Um, no, it's on the piano. I am. Ten points to you. Yes. Seventy-five plays. Seventy-five. Solve this anagram if you can. Here it comes. I'll give you a bit of a clue. Hardly surprising because it's very tiring on the frog's legs. Heavy hint. And on the legs of anyone else taking part. Practically giving it to you. All that stuff about frogs. Oh dear. Yeah. Tour de France. Tour de France, my it's goodness, so yes. I wheeled it up to you and tipped it out in front of you. Tour de France. If any French are listening, please, I, you know, it's only a kindly word, frogs and frogs' legs. And now, listen to this, if you will. Here it goes. What a wonderful send-off. The bride in a coat and dress of love in the mist blue. The coat in velour cloth, slightly flared, I'm told, and with the new mid-calf length. And wearing a high bonnet beret in the same colour blue with two quill feathers. There they go. The bride and bridegroom down the mall, and out of the gateway of Buckingham Palace come running the bridesmaids to see them off. And there's much cheering and waving by all the crowds who are still gathered. Now, there are two parts to this question. You've got to get them both. If ever I heard a man doing his best, it was that chap. Who were the happy couple, one, and what was the year? We think it was the present Queen and her husband, and the year was 1947. You're right, in all particulars. Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh, that's absolutely right. 85 plays 85, a needle game. In which country would you find Great Dividing, Flinders and MacDonald? Australia. You would, because? Mountain ranges. They are. Nothing more to that. Ten points to you. Now you have something to test your memory. You get a picture, it's a very well-known picture. Um, you stare at it for 15 seconds, and then I'll ask you individually each a question. The picture is, of course, called And When Did You Last See Your Father? by a cove called Yeams. And now, Mr. Pollock, how many people were seated in the picture? Five. They were. Good for you. Mr. Buswell, how many people were bareheaded? Three. No, seven. Mrs. Pollock, can mm. you name one article on the chair? A hat. Yes. There were also a pair of gloves and a book. 
Mrs. Buswell, your turn. Can you name one of the two weapons the soldier was carrying? A sword? Yes, and a pike. He also had a pike. Reasonable guess if you didn't remember. Soldiers often do. The Pollock children, were the little boy's hands in front of or behind him? Behind. Right. And the Buswell children, were the little girl's hands up or down? Up. They were up. Let's have another look at the picture, which is obviously an early version of Ask the Family, <laughs> where a genuine grilling is going on. I'm the fellow with that funny hat on. It's only good. Right. The present head of a firm is the eldest son of the eldest son of the eldest son of the founder of the firm. What relation is the founder to the eldest son of the present head? Great, great grandfather. Yes, just that and no more. 115, 125, the Pollock's edge ahead by, as it were, one question, one answer. Which function do formalin, salt, alcohol and vinegar hold in common? They're all acidic. You're wrong, uh, young Buswell, uh, and also I ask what function. Can you just repeat what the yes. is? Yes, which function do formalin, salt, alcohol and vinegar have in common? Preservatives. You're right, <laughs> you, it was a positive chorus, you knew it, you knew it. Here we have a question for the mother and elder child only. Which British children's author published a collection of Russian folk tales and was a journalist in Russia during the First World War? C.S. Lewis? No. Pick a good children's author, having regard to the date, and you may get it right, Buswell. I should have said at the beginning, guessing is uh, something that you can underwrite your possibilities with. Why not? Uh, no, it was Arthur Ransom. Yes, author of Swallows and Amazons and many another. It's very interesting. <clears throat> can you see what this picture is? It's taken from a, uh, a cute sort of angle, so yeah. Fingernail? No, it isn't a fingernail. And it draws out slightly, you might see a bit more. The Buswells, have you a clue? You can't even say, no, it doesn't look like anything, whatever, at the moment, because it's not drawing out anymore. Can we guess again? Oh, no, you can't do that. Two goes for the price of one, not likely. Well, I'll have to tell you, it's a bottle of wine. Which, if it had gone a bit further, you might have had a chance of knowing. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, we, we'll have um, a sort of quick, very quick round of questions. Uh, only five points because they're quite easy again. Which famous prisoner, they're all about uh, people escaping from places, which famous prisoner escaped from Loch Leven Castle? Richard III. No. Not he. Bonnie Prince Charlie. No, it's the other one, Mary Queen of Scots. <laughs> when not Bonnie Prince Charlie, always Mary Queen of Scots. Who escaped from the State Model Schools Pretoria? Winston Churchill. He did. Ten to you. About uh, five to you, I should say. The remotest dungeon of the best guarded keep of the stoutest castle in all the length and breadth of Merry England. Who escaped from that? Charles, Charles the First. No. Maybe not. Well, if it's Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing your luck, tying your arm. Yes, it wasn't he. It was Toad from Wind in the Willows. Oh, yes. 120 plays 135. Listen to a little music now. Here it comes. So who does the prince fall in love with? Three oranges. That's right, because... It's tell us Prokofiev, a the love of three oranges. That's right, that's right. Have a look at this, if you will, and tell me what the next letter in the sequence is. Think about it a little, because... Uh, and then it might dawn on you what those letters, what those um, 
letters represent? Yes. Yes. H? Uh, no, not H. J. J, yes. Uh, Willie, Willie, Harry, What's Steve, Harry, yes. uh, Dick, John, Harry, Free. Yes, you're right. You might have there, you see. You said in code what now appears in full glory. It's a list of the kings. And that King John came next. 130, 145. Which two planets move in an orbit between the sun and the earth and appear as evening stars if seen? Venus and Mercury. You're right. You probably knew it as well. Yes, yes. Well interrupt. I'd better finish the question so the people at home know what I'm grinding on about. Um, it's, uh, they appear as evening stars if seen east of the sun and morning stars if west of the sun. And Mercury and Venus is the answer. If it takes a lift, 24 seconds to travel from the first floor to the sixth floor, how long will it take to travel from the first floor to the 16th floor if the average speed is the same in each case? 72. It does, indeed. How quickly you obtain that, unless you've heard it before. No, <laughs> no, 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 just the computer-like activity. <coughs> Have a look at this and tell me which word can precede all the words you see. Cross. My goodness, that was just as quick, Mrs. Buzzell. You outdistance the Pollux. Now, there's only half a question in it. 150, 155. Here's one for fathers only. For what was HMS Vanguard launched in 1944 famous? Just the father. No one helps the fathers. It was the uh, cruise ship uh, for the Queen. And no, it wasn't that. Ah, uh, Mr. Pollock. I thought it was an aircraft carrier. Um, it, it, no, it's a battleship. But the distinguishing feature of it is that it was the heaviest, the largest uh, that ever was built in this country. Last and largest. 51 odd thousand tons is what it uh, displaced. Question now for mothers only, all on your own mothers only. Can you name one of the two acts which came into force on 29th of December 1975? Sex Discrimination Act. That's right, and the other one was the Equal Pay Act. Good, that was my suitable one for the mothers. Names of five musical compositions you now see before you. If you place the initial letter of the composer's name of each, you get the name of another composer. It's only a matter of speed. Yes? Holst. Holst is right, yes. and you'll now see it appear. You have Haydn, then you have Offenbach, then you have Leon Cavallo, Sullivan, and Tchaikovsky in the initials Holst. Which person of the blood royal is also chief red crow of the Blackfoot tribe of the old blood? Prince Charles. Yeah, it's got to be Prince Charles. As I often say, if it's not Winston Churchill, it was Prince Charles. Now, 150, 185, the last question arrives. It is this. What letter separates an officer's servant from a cricketer? S. Yes. Batman and Batsman. It's as simple as that, but you've got to spot it, and you spotted it. So there. What are the final scores? 150, 195. That means the Pollux are the winners, and there they look suitably uh, modest but uh, glowing with a certain amount of pride as is their due. The Buswells fought splendidly, magnificently even, and they glow a little too. But it's the Pollock family which will return and fight another day against uh, other contenders, and our programme itself returns at the same time next week. Until then, goodbye.